Today's video is sponsored by a good friend of the channel, Bootleg Greedo. Geeks Yord Moth Praetor versus Ayara this time. And yeah, since this top again, we've got Cabal Ritual to ramp. Um, our opponent did ask for no combos, so we do have the Bolas' Citadel Eth Flux Reservoir combo in here, which I will not go for because he asked for no combo. So, with nothing else to do on turn one, we'll throw out the Sensei's Divining Top. Seeing a gutter bones from our opponent, so yeah, I was going to go for the Cabal Ritual and hope that we could start swinging in with Gix, but I'm not too sure now. This can block, yes, when it's untapped it can block, so let's instead go for setting up our next few turns. Damnation could be useful. Uh, yeah, so let's go. Yeah, we'll go Ravenous Chupacabra, Swamp and Damnation on top. Throw down a swamp, we can spin Sensei's top at the end of the turn and pass. Hoping my opponent just plays out all their creatures into the board wipe, which will buy us a nice number of turns. Down comes another creature, that is Sanitarium Skeleton and the Crypt of Agadim, so board wipe will actually help them in a way there. Two damage from the Skeleton. Wondering if this is Skeleton Tribal now actually, we do see two Skeletons here. Spin the top again and seeing a Murderous Rider this time. So we'll go Murderous Rider, Swamp, and Ravenous Chupacabra. And we're not doing too much of anything else here, so I think just going for the Gix is fine. We know that we're drawing into a Swamp next turn, so we can throw out the Ether Flux Reservoir. I think we're fine pointing spot removal at our opponent's commander for now in the form of Ravenous Chupacabra. Maybe that's what we do next turn. Uh, no, instead of their commander, they go for the Phyrexian Arena, which I always see in White Border. Absolutely inexcusable. They did get down a Cabal Stronghold here, by the way, but they're a million miles away from doing anything with that. So, drop the Swamp, play the Ether Flux Reservoir, and then I imagine they're going to double block our commander here. We've got plenty of evasive creatures in the deck that hopefully we'll be able to get into sometime soon, so just pass the turn at this. Okay, we see a Ravenous Chupacabra from our opponent, so yeah, that... Makes me more inclined to hold off on the Gix and use a board wipe. We'll put our commander in the command zone. Maybe we're just slowly ramping up to a Villis Broker of Blood. Take the damage again. This gives us time to spin the top during the upkeep. So there's a Drana, Liberator of Malakir. I want to keep up the land drops here so it can be Murderous Rider, Drana. And we'll draw the Swamp this turn. They're still struggling on Black Mana, but I imagine they'll draw into it with the Phyrexian Arena. And as soon as they do, they'll get down the Iara, so... Yeah, we're just continuing to go slow. A snow swamp from our opponents, so we might have to wait on Field of the Dead at some point. Target opponent reveals their hand, choose a card with mana value 3 or greater, so... Uh, might have to... Might be going after our damnation there, in fact I... Almost guarantee that they will. They might go after the Villis, but we do have reanimation in this deck. Alright, they do go after the Villis. So, uh, are we to assume that they're not going to... Uh, Go for Ayara while they know we've got Damnation. Swinging in at us for 5 points of damage. So we spin the top at the end of the turn. There is a Signal Pest, the Drana, and Murderous Rider. So we'll just go Signal Pest, Drana, and the Swift End and Murderous Rider. We will draw in 2 next turn. Then just passing through the turn again, waiting for my opponent to actually get the Commander down, ready for us to Wrath. Seeing a Baron Moor now. And there's an Obnixilis Reignited. They do not know that we've got the Murderous Rider, so holding that up is fine here. They draw another card, lose a life. We will go for Swift End onto that straight away. That gains us a life with the Ether Flux Reservoir. Allows them into the Mana Crypt. So I'm assuming that they've got something to do with that mana. Unless they're scared of targeted removal from us, or targeted discard. Three cards in hand. We'll look at the top cards with the Sensei's top again. And alright, into a Vamp Tutor, so I don't mind shuffling these two things away, it's uh, yeah, really a Vamp Tutor that we want to see there. So we'll draw into the Vampiric Tutor next turn, Tutor, and then draw it with Sensei's top so that we're not losing our, our Sensei's Divining top, I think that's okay. So drawing into the Vamp Tutor, let's see what we can grab here. Why don't we just put Animate Dead on top and challenge them to get rid of the Villis. Villis can pull double duty for us, it can be um, card draw and a bit of removal as well, so tap Sensei's top, draw into the Animate Dead, and reanimate the Villis here. And then, I don't think we're going to play whatever we draw into here, so we'll just wait on our opponent. 
point some removal at them during their turn and we can try and hold them off a turn. They might not want to play things into the Villis. And there is a Duress from our opponents so they can take the Damnation away from us. And there we see Ayara, Fist of Lockthwain, obviously been holding that until we lose the Damnation. And then we lose life to the Ayara, so we're about to draw a card with Villis. And then a Senge Autocrat, so we're about to lose a bunch of life, which means we're about to draw a load of cards as well. So Ayara has us lose four life. Getting into another tutor in Demonic Tutor this time. There is a Nighthawk Scavenger, currently a 3-3. Okay, continuing to swing in towards us. Um, we can get rid of their Surf Tokens pretty easily. So let's just go for a block here. We'll block this thing because it costs them three mana to get it back out. And I don't want them to have the chance of reanimating the Ravenous Chupacabra, to be honest. So we take four damage and draw four cards here. Okay, gets us into Dark Ritual and Necromancy as well. Dorothy Warlord. So we'll take two life and put minus one, minus one on the Sengir Autocrat. And going down to 12, unfortunately, get rid of that thing. All right, now we've got double mana available to us with extra play in our lens. So probably Dark Ritual being cast next turn. Demonic Tutor into Cabal Coffers will be a good idea. Yeah, got a few things to do next turn. Draw into a swamp. Uh, let's cast the Dark Ritual. Gain a decent amount of life from the Aetherflux Reservoir here as well. Play the Demonic Tutor for our Cabal Coffers. And then play the Cabal Coffers. Uh, we can tap that down for mana now because it's not going to make any more mana this turn. Takes us to 5 and then it is the extra planar lens. Get rid of a tap land with the extra planar lens. And now at the snow covered swamps in play we'll tap for 2 mana which does include this one. But obviously we stand to do a lot better with that. We'll get out the thought vessel here as well because we don't want to discard to hand size particularly. Back up to 22. And then it can be the Ravenous Chupacabra to get rid of the Commander. And then let's go for the Cabal Ritual. We'll make us 5 mana here. And we'll just get down creatures ready for our Gix next turn. So the Nighthawk Scavenger. And yeah, our opponent doesn't fancy doing anything against all this. They've got a couple of cards to draw next turn. So we haven't automatically won here. But yeah, they obviously don't like what we're doing. So we'll try another one. Gix up against Kineos and Tiro now. And yeah, some decent mana for us. We will keep. We're on the play here, so play out a swamp and the Wayfarer's Bauble. And then, yeah, I think we take a turn off here to just ramp because I don't want our opponent blowing up the Wayfarer's Bauble. That'll put us on four mana next turn, so we could go for Jet Medallion into our commander. Yeah, we'll just do that. Seeing a Kiora's follower from our opponent. And that is another swamp for us, so it is Jet Medallion into our commander here. Or maybe we can just go Dorothy Slayer. We can definitely swing in with Dorothy Slayer next turn, because they're not going to get a Shadow Creature down. So I'll go for that instead, because we might not be able to swing in with the Gix and draw a card next turn. Our opponent ramps using the Kiora's Follower, and they did get a land off the top with the Oracle of Moldaya, which allows them into Explore, so we've seen a couple of their colours still. Alright, Sword of the Animist is very tempting. Um, I think I'd rather just draw another card though, so... Let's instead go for the Ayara. We can gain a bit of life from the Ayara, take the Summoning Sickness away from it, and we're going to lose life to Gix, so we need to start gaining life as much as we can. So get down the Gix, we'll drain our opponent again. And then our Dorothy Slayer has to swing in every turn, but it does have Shadow. So hit our opponent, we draw a card from the Gix Yorgmoth Praetor. Takes us into another land, unfortunately. A migration path on top, but they can draw into that straight away if they like. Instead going for something else by the looks of it, that is a Tatyova Benthic Druid, so... Seemingly they've gone for a landfall theme. And there we know that they've got a reality shift, so... Playing another land, and instead of going for the reality shift, they go for the Explore. So we need to remember that they've got Reality Shift, a Dragon Lord Ataka on top. Alright, there is a Hasty Creature in Gurmag Swiftwing. So, uh, yeah, I think we just go for that. And then let's just get the Sword of the Animus down, played and equipped, otherwise I'm just not going to do it. Um, might as well throw it on the Dorothy Slayer, because we're always going to be able to swing in with that. 
So we'll hit our opponent or try to hit our opponent with three creatures here. Don't mind trading them Tatyova for our Gix. Sword of the Animus triggers, we will get another basic out. And like I thought, they let us hit with all three creatures, so... First strike from the bat first, draws us a card. And there is a Bitter Blossom for one mana, so... Yeah, we can play that this turn if needs be. Not auto-yielding on the Gix Praetors, because we might draw into um, Vampire Tutor, or Vampiric Tutor. And then we'd be able to um, fix our draw there. Play out the Bitter Blossom for one mana. Also drew into Crick, Son of Yorgmoth, which I don't think is too useful yet. So just holding up the Ayara, first of Lockthwain. Our opponent might wipe the board or point some of that spot removal at something. And then we can draw a card with this. Aversin's Pilgrim on top of the library now, seeing this from the Oracle of Moldire, of course. Shuffling it away with the Migration Path, they'll draw two cards to the Tatyova. So drawing into Kozilek, Butcher of Truth, they are fixing their colours now, finally. <laughs> and a Consecrated Sphinx as well. Need to start seeing some of our removal. Command Tower is on top, and they draw into more big stuff in Recurring Insight this time. We don't have too many cards in hand. A Tidings, that is draw four. Yeah, draw four at Sorcery Speed for five mana. Okay, not using that spot removal. It is an instant speed piece of spot removal, so... Probably just want to do it during our turn. The Bitter Blossom triggers for the first time. Does not have haste though. We will drain our opponent though with the Ayara. So Bitter Blossom is effectively spitting out fairies for free. Once again drawing into a land. So we'll try and get into something else here. They'll probably remove the Gix at instant speed I would have thought. Okay going for Reality Shift onto the Dorothy Slayer instead. Gets us into a Manifest Creature which is a Plum the Forbidden. That's a good one for them to get rid of. So we'll swing in with the Gix and the Gurmag again. They might double block with the two, two twos here. All right, they had another piece of removal, so that's Swords of Plowshares on our commander. So we just hit our opponent for one. Getting rid of two cards from them, though. So now that we've seen a couple of pieces of spot removal gone down from our opponent, we'll go for the Swamp. We'll play out the Crick, Son of Yorgmoth, for only three mana. And then we'll play Gix. We'll put four life into that as well. And only pay two to get it out. Puts a plus counter on the Crick. Now we don't have many cards in hand obviously. But we can't afford to activate the Gix anyway. Um, yeah we'll just go for Sword of the Animist. Onto the Fairy Rogue token. And pass. Our opponent stands to make hell of a turn here. There is a Comet Storm on top. They're making some god tier draws. Devastation Tide returns all non-land permanents to their owner's hands. So we might as well draw off a token here. Um, we are going to get the Plum the Forbidden back, which is noteworthy. Uh, sacrifice a Fairy. That gets us, you'll never guess, into more mana. Then Tatyova comes into play again. We know that they're drawing into Comet Storm if they manage to make a land here. Don't seem as though they are doing though. Right, we draw into a Signal Pest. Let's drop a Swamp. And the Mana Crypt. That takes us into the Jet Medallion. And then we want to get down Crick as soon as we can, so we'll dump life into that again. And then we can play out Ayara for 6 mana. Or 6 life even. So we're down to 22 again, we'll have to be careful. Um, Bitter Blossom... Not sure what to put life into here. We'll put 4 life into the Gix. And that won't cost any mana, thanks to the Jet Medallion. 1 mana into the Signal Pest. Play the Gurmag Swiftwing as well. Put two life into that. Bitter Blossom, two life again. And then we can go Sword of the Animist. Equip Sword of the Animist onto our Haste creature. And that will ramp us a little bit more. And then we're still able to hold up Plum the Forbidden for two life. So that's good. Swing in at our opponent. And we will draw a card here as well. So we hit with Gix. Draw a card. <laughs> it's... Yep. Yeah. Well, the game's gone pretty well for us, apart from the fact that we can't draw anything apart from lands. You now challenging our opponent to do something about our board again. Crick has done a lot of work for us here. Okay, so there is a Comet Storm. Um, let's go Plum the Forbidden for two life. And then we sacrifice the Gix, sacrifice the Crick. We'll draw three cards and lose three life. Okay, and our opponent scoops to that. Why on earth would you scoop to that with the cards you have in hand? Yeah, you'll never guess what we were drawing into. A crappy vampire cutthroat and more lands. So, yeah, the turn after, we just draw into a land again. So, yeah, awesome. 
Not sure why my opponent scooped there. He most likely would have beat us, judging by the draws we were making. Gix versus Rafine this time. We are on the draw, so I think I'll try this one. We've got 38 lands in this deck, but we don't seem to be able to start with anything other than a two lander. Okay, there's a Dorothy Voidwalker for us. So we've got a few spells that we can cast while we're waiting for a third land if needs be. Chrome Mox from our opponent. Exiling underneath that a Mana Drain, which I'm glad to see the back of. Not sure it's worth getting rid of Mana Drain for the sake of getting out a quick Rafine, but maybe they've got some fast combo they can get down. Alright, there's our third land, so I think we're fine going for the Dorothy Voidwalker in case they do have some kind of weird combo. Dorothy Voidwalker might shut it down. And we can try to go for the Gix next turn, start drawing cards with that. And that will hopefully keep us in lands so that our hand isn't quite as bad. So swinging in at us, they uh, look to connive here, assuming that they discard a non-creature permanent. Uh, exiling from them a Scalding Tarn. So they've got four mana available to them here. We get into another swamp straight off the top, that's good. So uh, I assume they're holding up counter magic, so I'm going to go for the Iara instead. Seeing as how we're drawing into lands, we've got one to make next turn, so I'm not quite as desperate to get my commander down. Allowing Iara down pretty quickly. So it uh, could be risky tapping down the Dorothy Voidwalker, but we'll do it anyway. They might have spot removal for Dorothy, so they don't mind discarding something to it that's really good. Because they've got spot removal to point at that, so we never get to cast the good thing for free. It is a tap ability that we would have our opponent worry about there. Swing it in again, going to loot. And this time we see the back of a farewell, so... And I don't know what they're keeping hold of if they're discarding things like farewell and... Mana Drain. Not worthy that they do still get the plus counter on their commander. So now seeing a Dak on Shadow Slayer. And they can kill that off and get rid of the Dorothy Voidwalker, which is exactly what they do. And we can't reanimate that because it is exiled. Uh, so now we can hope that they don't have counter magic, I suppose. Yeah, the extra plane our lens sets us up quite nicely for next turn, potentially. And we can still go for the Vampire Cutthroat so that we've actually got something to swing in with next turn. So extra plane our lens comes down pretty quickly, get rid of a tap land with it. And then play out the Vampire Cutthroat. And we'll hold up the Iara so that we can sacrifice it if needs be. A land off the top next turn would be really nice, our opponent connives again. Thinking that maybe going after the Ravenous Chupacabra would be good. So now discarding Archon of Cruelty, which no doubt they want to reanimate. And there we see the Persist, so they get that back. And I don't know if I'm necessarily all that bothered about keeping both of my creatures here. So I'm actually going to draw another card, yeah. Let's sacrifice that, draw a card with the Ayara. Okay, we were getting into a land anyway, so in hindsight wouldn't have done that. Um, get rid of the... Uh, yeah, get rid of Jet Medallion and just hope that Bolas' Citadel gets us some good stuff. Okay, an Arcane Signet. They've still got double blue available to them. Okay, into a land again. I'm going to hold off on the Urborg because they've got a fetch that could make use of Urborg. Let's attempt the Bolas' Citadel. Okay, a Dark Ritual. We'll play off the top. Feed the Swarm. Can get rid of the Archon. Then we see a Rankle, which does have haste. And then a land on top. So let's go for the Gix with the three mana that we had. And we'll swing in towards our opponent and draw a card and sacrifice a creature, I think. So Rankle can go on the stack first. We'll not draw a card to the Rankle. Um, yeah, let's go for discarding a card and sacrificing a creature. We'll get rid of our Ravenous Chupacabra against my better judgement. And then the Gix is going to draw us a card off the top. Hopefully reveal something other than a land. It does not. So let's just discard the Swamp here then because we know that we're drawing into one next turn anyway. And then we'll sacrifice our own Gix, because Rankle might be a headache for our opponent here. So, pass the turn at that. They've got one card left in hand. They discarded a Prairie Stream. And we're just praying that they don't get removal for the Bolas' Citadel, and that we don't hit a chunk of lands off the top. Luckily, we can replay our commander next turn. Cracking the Polluted Delta. <laughs> and of all the things, we see an Elspeth Sun's Champion, so making some Soldier Tokens. So let's see what we get off the top. There's a swamp. We can play that one off the top. And of course, it's just another swamp on top. So let's play out the Gix. 
And we'll have to just waste one mana, unfortunately. Swinging at the Elspeth, I don't think it matters. So it's when it deals damage to a player. Ugh, alright, it'll have to be straight at our opponent then. And then Rankle goes on the stack. We will each lose a life to our card. Each player discards a card as well. We're not bothered about sacrificing now. And then Gix will lose us a life and draw us <laughs> into another swamp. So we'll discard to the Rankle. Draw another swamp. All right, there's a reanimate. So with our life total being where it is, do we go for... Okay, we can gain life with the Archon. So let's reanimate onto the Archon. Revealing a Cabal Ritual on top. And we're at eight life, so... Yeah, let's do that. Puts us out five mana available to us, so we'll play out the Swiftfoot Boots. Drew into the Swiftfoot Boots off the Archon, of course. Um, then it is Swiftfoot Boots onto the Archon, I think. And we'll try and get our opponent to tick down on the Elspeth next turn. Uh, yeah, still got the Ravenous Chupacabra held up. Our opponent has one card in hand, and of course it is Demonic Tutor. I dare say our opponent's had a bit more luck than us this game. So now seeing a Supreme Verdict, wiping the entire board, uh, nothing we can do in response. Then ticking up the Elspeth again. They're a couple of turns away from the limit break on that. Alright, a Signal Pest for us. And there's a Knight's Whisper, so yeah, I don't see as though we're going to do much of anything here to be honest. Let's just play and crack the Marsh Flats, try and get into something different. <laughs> Alright, into even worse cards, so... Yeah, we just pretty much lose here, I think. Go for our commander. Put the Swiftfoot Boots onto our Gix. And then we're just passing the turn at that, I think. Only thing we can hope for, really, is getting into a Demonic Shooter for the combo with Bolas's Citadel so that we can pretty much gain infinite life. <laughs> our opponent has some god tier top decks, though. That is Archon of Cruelty. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're pretty much just going wide on us here. We lost three life there, so go down to one. They go wide with the soldier tokens. Yeah, good game to my opponent. I enjoyed playing this deck. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I thought we might get the ability off more than we actually are doing. We're really just using Grix or Gix as a card draw engine. So it would be cool to fill up our hand and get the ability off at some point. But by the time we get to that point, most players on Magic Online are scooping on us, so... Yeah, it's not likely that we'll ever see that ability, unfortunately, but I will continue to try in another video. So hopefully you all look forward to that. Huge thank you to the patrons as ever. You can follow the link in the description below through to Patreon to support financially if you are at all able to. A massive thank you to you if you decide to do that. I'm Tribal Kai. Thank you for watching.